Randy McKee here with Soccer 605. I'm here with Mark Koski, who's with the National Federation of High School Associations. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> thanks, Mark, for being with us today. Hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it. It's just an honor for the NFHS uh, to, to be a part of this first inaugural state championship event. Actually, a couple years ago when, when Wayne Carney, of course, the executive director of the uh, South Dakota High School Activities Association, contacted me and said that South Dakota was going to become our last state association to adopt the sport. I put it on my calendar right away and said, hey, I want to be a part of that. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. Well, it's great to have you here. You know, and, and speaking of that and, and Wayne's involvement in the High School Activities Association, you know, I don't know if uh, there's ever been a case in the history of the United States where it was so hard to get a sports sanction as it has been in South Dakota, but, but I'm sure you see this with club sports all over the United States. Yeah, we, we definitely do. Uh, we're, we're most excited that, you know, soccer is actually our fifth most popular sport in the country on the boys' side. It's the fourth most popular sport on the girls' side nationally. That's out of 17 sports at the high school level. Uh, but, but we're excited that, hey, uh, you know, high school events, whether it be speech and debate, music, drama, of course, all the sporting events, the participation numbers continue to increase, and so that's a good thing. Can you tell us a little bit about the Federation's role across the country? Yeah, definitely. So uh, the, the NFHS, we're based out of Indianapolis, Indiana, actually uh, same office building as the NCA, uh, right in downtown Indianapolis, is, is, as I mentioned, is where we're based out of. We are the governing body for high school sports and activities uh, throughout the country. We, we work with 51 state member high school athletic and activities associations. So, of course, here in South Dakota, it's the South Dakota, South Dakota High School Activities Association. Every state uh, has an association very similar to that. And what we do, we produce the rules. Uh, for for all 17 sports and so each year of course you've seen the, the high school soccer rule book that's what we produce each and every year we look at the changes that potentially need to be made within the sport so we handle that for soccer as well as the other 16 sports uh, so we get that out to the member state associations of course they implement them at the local level um, and and we you know just make sure that that there is a uh, there's a governing body you know so that uh, if there is a, a national ruling that needs to go out maybe there's something goofy that just happened in a game, they'll contact us, and as the national rule interpreter, what what I'll do is that I'll uh, you know send out a, a national interpretation so that across the board nationwide, we need to be calling a particular you know play or uh, instance in a game this way, and so uh, work very 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 similar to the NCA. Uh, that's really our role, uh, but we do really. Uh, we, we bring it down to the local state association so that the, the local association ultimately has the, the authority of what happens, but they use us as more of a sounding board uh, and, and someone for advice and, and guidance and so on. You've probably been busy the last few years in this with this, all this concussion business. It seems like there's a, a, a major awakening, I guess if you could call that, to, to some of the hazards associated with concussions. No, no question. You know, concussions have always been there. We, we, we know, you know, since the NFHS was established in 19, 1920, there, there were concussions, but now we know what they are. Uh, and, of course, we, we know how to handle them in a sense uh, a, a little better, of course. Um, you know, we know that, you know, just through, through big surveys that we host uh, or, or have each and every year that, of course, football, uh, American football has, has the most concussions, but girls' soccer right now is the second most concussed sport. And so that's concerning to us. Uh, you know, so as the rules committee uh, meets each and every year to look at, you know, potential rule changes of what we need to do to, to, to make sure that, you know, concussions are reduced. We're not going to say concussions will, will be eliminated. It's not going to happen. You know, the sport of soccer is, 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 is what it is. Uh, but if there's something that we can do to help eliminate uh, the number of concussions, uh, then we want to write rules to help that purpose. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic to, to hear that, you know, because that is a national concern and so many... Uh, people my age, you know, from the, back in the old days that uh, weren't paying attention to those injuries or really uh, being bothered by that. Well, you know, uh, one last thing while we have you here. You know, across the country, we're uh, seeing uh, kind of a segregation, if you will, of some of America's top players uh, ever since, uh, you know, they, they started the academy programs across the country. We've seen so many uh, of our top players not only taken out of ODP but also out of the high school programs to play club soccer and uh, I know we talked about this off camera earlier but uh, kind of fill us in on on what your stance is there and what you see going on around the country. 
Yeah, it's 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 originally it was and it still is very concerning to us. Uh, you know, when when U.S. Soccer, uh, of course, came out uh, with the U.S. Soccer Development Academy uh, about four years ago. Uh, of course, we met with them. We continue to meet with U.S. Soccer. They're based out of Chicago uh, in regards to this situation because our concern was obviously the top four thousand players, the perceived top four thousand players, are going to be taken out of our taken out of the high school game, and it puts, of course, the the coaches now in a in a strong disadvantage. You know, if you have that stud soccer player that uh, he decides to, you know, of course, play play for this uh, particular development academy team. So um, we've continued to fight our fight, uh, obviously letting, you know, the parents who ultimately have to choose and, and the coaches have to choose if, if a particular player is going to play for a, a development academy team. We've continued to say, hey, these are the benefits of high school soccer. These are the benefits of representing your, your school, your community, uh, all the great things that high school soccer brings to, uh, you know, to, to, to a a local uh, to a local community, we've continued to uh, you know let those lo those out and and you know state to the to U.S. Soccer um, that you know ultimately what we're what we're really concerned about is you know there was a there's a um, uh, an act that was created actually in, um, in in the 1980s called the Ted Stevens Amateur Sports Act, uh, where basically the Amateur Sports Act their their biggest uh, thing with that is that you know students uh, shouldn't have to choose you know and and that's that's the problem that we have with with the development academy. We understand we want we want the uh, the U.S. to be the best in soccer uh, among the world. We totally get that. Uh, but if there's a way that we can maybe work together uh, to make this work, it would be a good thing. Again, as I mentioned, it's 4,000 students, which generally is, is small when you look at there's 500,000 soccer, high school soccer boys that play the game. It's a small number, but is it those best 4,000 kids that are now taken off the high school field, uh, that's a concern to us. Another concern is right now it's for the boys only, and it's, uh, it's, it has nothing to do, there's, there's, there's no initiative for the girls uh, to, to have a development academy team or a program, which, um, you know, obviously we're, we're all about, you know, uh, gender equity uh, among, among both our, our males and our females. So those things, again, we continue to fight the fight. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of articles that we've published um, uh, we've had, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, big time uh, uh, meetings with, with U.S. soccer to, to see what we can do. One of the problems that we have right now is that within our schools, um, or within our states, 55% of our states play in the fall. 20% play in the winter, okay, so now you have another 25% that play in the spring. So at the high school level, I hate to say, say it, but we need to figure out when we're playing soccer so that if we all played, if 100% if of our states played in the fall, and then, of course, we would have the winter and, and, the, and the, the spring game available, maybe U.S. soccer would look at that saying, okay, hey, now we'll start in November. And, and go from November, you know, through through the summer, and then of course we wouldn't we wouldn't mess with those two to three months that we right now have an overlap. So, uh, if 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 we can find a way to maybe get some of our states to, to look at that a little more, and we are, we've actually had two two states have, that have converted to the fall. Uh, you know that were, they were originally they were spring uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they they see the they see the benefits of playing in the fall. Allowing the student participants to to play in the winter and play in the spring, and then then move forward. So that's the things that you know we're working on working on at the federation. Um, obviously, working for the for the students in which we serve. That's our that's our big goal. And I tell you what, being being here today, I mean, it just just shows me exactly why I do my job. You know, it's it's great great to be a part of it. Well, we're still in the infancy here, but uh, you know, I I think we're going to see a movement toward uh, sanctioning, and you know, I, I see a lot of good things based on that. Well, Mark, uh, thanks very much for uh, taking some time at halftime here, the Aberdeen and uh, Sioux Falls Christian match. Uh, we really do appreciate your time and your input. Right, and thank you for what you do. Appreciate it. Thanks much.